Santos, they don't care anymore. So basically, what's the time frame? I think that's critical. Obama, and according to Doug Hagman's source at Rosebud, and then I got a call before I even saw that Doug had posted his story from a friend of mine in Colorado who stated that two, one DHS high-ranking guy and one military guy took their phone batteries out and went for a walk. And basically the name of the conversation was the stuff is going to hit the fan in the next 60 days. Now, could it be prolonged? Absolutely. Setting dates is dangerous. But let me share this. The entire Spetsnaz doctrine of which Lunyev, who was not taken seriously by the Western press when he wrote his book and when everybody interviewed him, the bottom line is it's going exactly like he said. The secrets of the KGB archive is a bit uh, Visali Matrokin. Absolutely the same thing. Victor Super. No, I remember that, and, and, and I remember 15, 16 years ago reading that stuff that had come out a decade before and thinking, this is just ridiculous. You know, stuff like Red Dawn and all this. But when you understand that the globalists have, have, have basically gotten all their operatives in, they're going to sell foreigners coming over here during civil unrest. I mean, I remember two years ago, there was the headline, even the Washington Post and uh, other publications, Toronto Star, you know, uh, Congress wants to know uh, about deals the Pentagon has with foreign troops during emergency. And we see U.S. troops in Canada for the Olympics. And then we see Mexican and Canadian troops here saying, yes, they're going to help fight terrorists. And then we see the new Army report out, which they're defending, which has been given to the Joint Chiefs saying, the Tea Party is going to link up with Al-Qaeda. I mean, who would ever believe that? Well, when they stage terror attacks and blame it on us, that's how this is going to happen. And sure, somebody who's informed will know it's bull, but the average couch potato is going to buy it. What do you make uh, of all of these preparations to demonize gun owners, conservatives, libertarians, uh, we've been told it's not Al Qaeda now. It's the uh, it's the gun owners, the libertarians, the white Al Qaeda. I mean, totally racial. White people are terrorists. They work with Al Qaeda. I mean, it's so over the top, ridiculous. One of the defense, or excuse me, one of the most uh, uh, in your face offensive plans of the Soviet Union prior to their complete takeover of the United States. By the way, and remember, Khrushchev said they'd do it. My, quote, my statement is it's being done right now before everyone's eyes is to cause a race war and a race riot. The demonization of the white, and let's make it clear, when uh, Rob was arrested, you know, he made it his faith in Jesus stand. And unless people understand that in, in the world of law enforcement and the military now, Islam is good, Christianity is bad, okay? The vilification of Christians is the same as the vilification of gun owners, the same vilification as white. It's those white people's fault, and it's not. It is the Illuminati plan. It's Albert Pike, morals and dogma. It's playing out right like, you know, the Third World War and the contested letter from uh, Mazzini to Albert Pike, uh, you know, basically said they're going to turn the Christians against the Mohammedans, the atheists against the believers, and when everybody's killed off everybody, this is the bottom line, then they're ready for the pure doctrine of Lucifer. Alex, what I've been trying to tell people for the last 20 years on talk radio, there is a supernatural element to this thing, and, and you know, again, uh, I remember that your 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 ability to or your desire to know this stuff, you wanted to always have documentation, which is good. But now you've got documentation of some of the weirdest crap in the universe taking place, and and people are are being trained to just accept the perverse, the insane and the macabre as being normal. For instance, beheading people, cannibalism, all of the strange zombieism. And for the record, the zombie essay that I put out on my website, which in, is the most definitive thing, Sue Bradley, uh, one of the most famous researchers in the country. She used to be uh, the head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Admiral Thomas Moore's personal research assistant. She put out all of the zombie stuff. Uh, let me make it clear to everybody who a zombie is. To the elite, to the Illuminous, the zombies are all those who are left above ground when all of the manufactured and the genetically altered viruses and all the mayhem is released. So and so they're creating a racial memory in humans that we're all going to die, accepted. Uh, all these shows on discovery and history about the world after humans 
how beautiful it's going to be. Uh, they're pretty much just selling us on their religion that we're scum. And I have no doubt that they've been caught, you know, soft killing us. Let me bring this up. What about the Middle East, where they now admit in the L.A. Times, the New York Times, everywhere, that the CIA, MI6, and others are, from the beginning, funding al-Qaeda to bring down Gaddafi, who I'm no fan of, but he was working with the West. Get rid of him, set him up, mayhem, line up, 40,000 black people, kill him. I mean, it's hell on earth. And now going in to, uh, to kill the Christians, Jews, and uh, some of the Muslim minority groups to get rid of Assad. I mean, it is out in the open where, where the New York Times shows video, along with BBC, like it's good of them torturing people and then strapping them in cars to make them be suicide bombers or threatening to kill people's families if they don't. And this is al-Qaeda. And the CFR came out a month ago and, and uh, said, we need al-Qaeda. The quote was, we need al-Qaeda, and said they were good. So the TSA needs to grope me and my family to find out uh, bin Laden in my pants. But, but al-Qaeda is good. I mean, it, it just none of it even makes sense. The, the, well, the, I yeah, yeah, I think it does. It's a redefinition of terms. And I, I told this equation, let me, and you'll, you'll pick this up really quick. They identify, they vilify, they nullify, they destroy. Who are they nullifying right now? White Christian gun owners, okay? Destroy. Well, when all the troops come, they've already got the homes. And look, I, I categorically reject the argument that there are 300 million guns in this country and they never dare do it. Listen, they know who's got what guns. They don't know every gun. But they do know that, and those who have been GPS, of which I'm one, and, you know, based on what you said, you may be one, but those who become, uh, uh, if you will, problematic to them are the ones that are trying to tell the truth. Remember the old statement? An age of universal deceit, telling the truth is a revolutionary act. So now the thing is, is that the redefinition of who the bad people are. Listen, I had an FBI agent, a special agent in charge in Bozeman, Montana, who quit the department because he was a Christian. And they said, you know, basically to him, Christians bad, uh, Muslims good. The whole idea of this war between Islam and Christianity, look at how it comes on the scene, basically as an offshoot of the United States backing the Mujahideen in Afghanistan against Russia. Well, the point is, is that uh, the entire fraud of 9-11, but Alex, the whole country is basically super saturated in lies. That's why Jeremiah the prophet cried out. He said, woe unto them who call good evil and evil good, where up is down and down is up and right is left and left is right. The point is, is this is the classic, and I use the word with no apologies, communist takeover and it's going exactly by the book like Bill Ayers and all the other weather underground writers were talking about openly in those days. And unfortunately, Jeremiah Wright, and, and what was Obama going to do? He was, he, it wasn't Rahm Emanuel, the one that was calling on uh, Farrakhan, Nation of Islam, to help restore order in Chicago? Good night. And so what we're talking about is a, a, and I want to bring this up, all of the ammunition that we see being purchased, you know, and even the NRA and ILA are trying to make excuses, oh, it doesn't trouble us. Well, the caliber should be a tip-off. I believe it was your InfoWars article that I linked to, what was it, a year ago, Alex, where it showed all the uh, uh, little kids in their black T-shirts holding MP5, H&K submachine guns? You no, that was that? in the New York Times. They said Times, they yeah. said the Explorer Scouts are trying to take on disgruntled veterans, yes. and it showed photos of the dead veteran in the mock shootout. And then I confirmed the ROTC for at least 15 years trains to fight one enemy and one enemy alone. They take them out to fields, the officer candidates, and they train to fight militias and role players wearing John Deere hats. Dressed up like Elmer Fudd. So the whole threat structure has always been about Americans that are libertarian, constitutional Christians. And I told people, I said, this is a bait and switch. They run Al-Qaeda. They've staged this so that we'll launch all these wars to sap and bankrupt the country. Then they're going to flip the script on us. And that's what I wanted to raise. There's so many points. I mean, I can't even. 1.4 billion. It's not 750 million and 250 million. It's 1.4 billion plus in the last year, since uh, last fall, that they've bought 
four billion and, and 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 millions of new rounds a day being bought every agency department of education riot shotguns people that aren't even sworn officers armored vehicles digging in food supplies i talked to the big gunshot distributors they say the police are lined up around the block governments arming totally crazy gearing up to fight the american people there's no doubt they're gearing up for this my question is what will precipitate it? The economic collapse, an Iran war? What are your sources telling you? And are there my, any ways to back this off? Yes, my sources, which are uh, high-ranking international bankers and military, both former and former intel people, are all saying the same thing. That, and, and one even said this to get me a message. Tell Steve everything else is, is basically camouflage. Everything we are focusing on right now, and Doug Hagen was told this too, is the financial, the orchestrated financial collapse. Can I spell it out for people what an orchestrated financial collapse means in their world? I told people, Alex, before it appeared on the front of Drudge, that my sources had stated that there's going to be a cyber attack on the banks in the United States, okay? And that whole lie of 700 or 75 million, then they upped it to one point, uh, or I'm sorry, 250 million, whatever. My sources, who are the people that are connected with the people that monitor those type transactions on a worldwide basis, claim that in that short period of time, well, Drudge was saying that it was 150 million or 75 initially, that it was in the hundreds of billions. So here's what's going to happen. Here's how I'm told it's going to play out, okay? Now, remember, when any operation gets exposed, they can change, modify, they can alter. So one of the good things, and you and I saw it and happened. You remember when the whole world was ready to go to uh, uh, basically a fourth-level biohazard? Yes. And we prayed, Alex, and you let me pray on your show. And the people who are listening to us prayed. That went from being ready to be implemented in 24 hours to completely dying the very next day. You remember that? That yes. was the greatest, in my opinion, the greatest uh, uh, manifestation of God's love and intervention and caring for his creation because they were all set to go. We're told we're going under martial law. That's when I came up with with a statement quoted on your uh, show, shot in the arm, shot in the head, either way you end up dead. We saw that happen. Now I'm being told that you'll go to sleep on a Friday night. Between Friday and instantly between the times that the overnight hot money changes hands, there will be an orchestrated cyber attack on the major banks of the world. It, let's say you and I and 10,000 of our listeners all have our accounts in, called Happy Go Lucky Bank. And Happy Go Lucky Bank obviously has its internal uh, that Alex, you know, has a thousand, Steve has a thousand, or whatever. The point is, is that the entire income stream in the account of Happy Go Lucky Bank is going to be attacked. Concurrent with that is all ATM machines will shut down, and that all uh, credit cards will be stopped. Now, this is what I'm being told by some of the highest ranking people and most well-placed people. When it comes to the Monday morning and everybody starts to scream, that will give them a platform, them, the Illuminati, the globalists, the current uh, members of the uh, uh, ruling uh, dictatorship in this country, United States, and the military. That's when they kick into high gear. They'll claim it was a foreign nation, blame it on somebody other than them, and in essence, they're going to create the problem, they're going to provide the solution, and in providing the solution, they're going to prove once again that the Hegelian dialectic is when you create a problem, you provide the solution, your answer always brings about your desired uh, result. So that's what I'm told is going to do that. I'm also told that concurrent with that will be an exchange in the Middle East. I said, well, it be a day, an hour. They said, that's flexible, but you can expect it all to go down because the international bankers will have done two things, Alex. They will have plundered the entire United States savings and, and financial resources. Understand, it's just computer entries, and they will have succeeded in drawing the attention away from them. Remember this, uh, the head of banking, I think it was Rothschild himself, Amschel said, or one of the Rothschilds said, we make more in one day of war than an entire year of peace. No, and that's you, it. And, and that's why they're also famous for funding all sides of the conflict. Absolutely. Uh, so they debilitate both sides.